Hi everyone, Chris Tisdell here again. Thanks for tuning in. In this presentation, I'm going to continue my series of videos on functions and a beginner's guide to calculus. Now, in previous videos, we talked about what's a function, domain and range, sketching the graphs of functions, and so on. Now, in this presentation, I'm going to talk about the absolute value function and the absolute value of a function. So I'm going to define it, I'll draw some graphs, and I'll show you an example where we're given a function and you have to draw the graph of the absolute value of the function. Okay, so let's get down to business. Here is the definition for the absolute value of x. Now this is a really um, sometimes uh, uh, quite a, a, a nasty introduction to it because somebody puts up a definition like that and you switch off immediately. So before we get to that, what, what are absolute values about? Well, this is probably the best way I can explain it. Ab in mathematics, absolute values tell us about distance between two things. Now, distance in mathematics is very, very important. Um, and you can use absolute values to look at error analysis and tolerance analysis in engineering. Okay, so let's get back to this definition here. Well, before we get to this, it's, it's a split or a piecewise defined function because it's defined one way here and another way here. Okay, so if I was to draw a little um, picture here, the graph of the absolute of x, so think of x as, as, as a function of x, just y equals x, uh, absolute. If I draw in my axes here, the graph of the absolute value function of x looks like this. So here you can think of this as being, you know, the x part, and here's the negative x part, if you like. Okay, and together, this is the absolute value of x. All right, so for on this side, it's just the regular x function. On this side, it's the negative of the input, the negative of x. Now, what, what does this actually measure, though? Okay, so let me, let me give you an example. If I just draw in the graph of the thing inside the, the vertical lines, the absolute value signs, I get the curve or the line y equals x. So if I, if I take the absolute value of this, what, what, what is it measuring? Well, it's measuring the distance from, say, if, if, I'm, if I'm here at, say, 3. The distance from the curve or the, or the line to the x-axis directly down is also 3 units. Okay, so it's sort of measuring the distance between the graph of x, in this case, and the x-axis. If I move 4 units this way, I'll get to say negative 4, and then I, I see, okay, well, what is the distance between the graph and the x-axis? Well, it'll be 4 units. Okay, so what this thing represents is the distance from this line to the x-axis. Okay, so that's one way of, of, of remembering it in a geometric way. Okay, so um, let me uh, show you how we're going to apply these ideas. We're going to look at a question where you're given a function and you're asked to graph the absolute um, function associated with it. So, so here's, here's an example here, right? Sketch the graph of this function and hence use that information to sketch the graph of this function. 
Okay, so how do we do it? Well, we'll look at that in a minute. But here are some basic uh, tips. So to graph this, first you graph the function without the absolute values in it, and then you reflect what lies below the x-axis so that it lies above the x-axis, right? Distance can't be negative. So absolute values cannot be negative because you can't have a negative distance. So let me show you what I mean there. If I was given a... Uh, let me move that up. If, if my function of x... Let's say it's just a parabola, okay? Right? I can see all these points lie above the x-axis and all these points lie below the x-axis. So I just reflect, flip them so they lie above the x-axis or on the x-axis. So working from this little sketch, what I would do is I would draw the same parts in that lie above the x-axis, so it might be something like um, that and that. And for this bit, you reflect it, so it'll, it'll look something like this. Okay, so that then would be the, abs the absolute. Okay, because you can see here, this, there's a distance there. Distance can't be negative, so it's just reflected. So the the x-intercepts stay the same. If the y-intercept is negative, it goes up here to the, the... You just change the sign on it, and you can redraw your graph. Okay, let's do an example. Okay. Sketch the graph of this function, and hence... So when we say hence, we mean use the, the information that you've just shown to graph this function. So let's call this um, f of x. So let's sketch that first. Okay, well, to sketch it, I'm going to factorize that quadratic, that x squared minus 2x minus 3. So we want two numbers that multiply to give negative 3 and add to give negative 1. So it'll be a negative, one, a negative 3 and positive 1. So you can Oops, factor it like this. So this tells us now where the f of x cuts the x-axis. It will cut, cut the x-axis at positive 3 and negative 1. And because there's a positive number in front of the x squared, the graph will look like a u. It won't look like an n, okay? So let me draw in some, some axes. Okay. So it'll cut at negative 1 and 3. And it looks like a U shape. Now, what will the Y intercept be? Remember, to calculate the Y intercept, we let X equal 0. So 0 minus 0 minus 3. So the Y intercept will be negative 3. OK, so let's sketch our curve then. It'll it'll go off, come down here, and then maybe move move there. Okay, so let's see if I can put that in. Okay, so that's the graph of y equals f of x. Okay. So what I want to do now is say, all right, well, I'll keep the bits that are above the x-axis. The bits that are uh, below the x-axis will get reflected, so they go above the x-axis. So let, let's do that. Okay, so a new set of axes. Again, I'm just sort of drawing freehand here. Um, so it's not a perfect and exact drawing. Okay, so this will stay at negative 1. This will go to positive 3. And this will stay at positive 3. Okay, so let's see if I can draw this in now. It'll sort of come down here, go back up there, come down here, go up there, come down there and go off. Okay, so let's see if I can do this. 
There's a spike there. Okay, let me just fill that in a bit more. Okay. And there you have it. So this is now y equals the absolute value of f of x. So this is a technique that you can use for lots of different problems. This was a simple one because it involved a quadratic, okay, a parabola that where we just flipped the negative part of the graph. Okay, so just to sum up, absolute values have got to do with distance, okay? If you're given a function and you want to graph the absolute value of that function, first graph this bit, then reflect in the x-axis whatever lies below the x-axis, so it lies above the x-axis. Okay, I'll be doing some more examples on these as we go along. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for tuning in and um, see you soon. Bye. Hi again everyone, Chris Tisdell here again. Thanks for tuning in. In this presentation, I'm going to continue my series of videos on calculus, and in particular, we're going to talk about functions and the absolute.